Welcome back to our Harkley YouTube channel. We're so happy to have you. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We're the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we're going to talk about the connection between vestibular processing and the Moro reflex. So the Moro reflex in infancy is typically activated by a loud noise, a sudden change in head or body position, a bright light, so changes in the environment or even changes with their body. So whether you are setting baby down and you move them a little bit too quickly when you're putting them down in the crib and it activates the moral reflex, or maybe you successfully put them down in their crib without waking them up, but then you bump the crib and it jostles them and that moral reflex gets activated because it's a safety reflex. It's designed to alert the caregiver that something has happened to the infant and they might be in danger. So what we're gonna really focus on here is the head and body position change that activates the moral reflex. So the vestibular system is really what is connecting the movement with the moral reflex, so those movement changes. So your vestibular system is located in your inner ear and it's activated by changes in position, changes in head position specifically. So when you go upside down or you do a somersault or you're moving in any way, your vestibular system is being activated. So as an older child or even as an adult, if you are somersaulting, swinging, riding a roller coaster, if somebody jumps out and startles you or scares you, not only are you activating the vestibular system with that movement, but you're also activating that retain moral reflex, which is going to cause a variety of things to happen. For example, what you could see is this release of chemicals of stress hormones if this reflex is retained. And it basically keeps your body in like that chronic state of fight or flight, which obviously it's not safe, it's not healthy to be in a chronic state of fight or flight all the time. You know, if there's a lion chasing after us, obviously we want to be in that fight or flight. We want to run. We want to, we want to fight. We want to save our lives, but we should go back into our state of rest and digest. And we should be able to focus and participate in our daily activities without feeling that adrenaline rush. You can think about how dangerous it could be if we are constantly in that state of fight or flight. We're not able to focus. We're not able to rest. We're not able to digest our food. Instead, we're just trying to fight off that lion at all times. And then if you do have a retained moral reflex, it's gonna cause you to avoid activities that activate that moral reflex. You're gonna avoid movement-based activities. You're going to avoid the roller coasters and the rolling down the grassy hill with your children. You're gonna avoid anything that activates not only the moral reflex, but also your vestibular system, which can also cause challenges with sensory processing. Yes, so for example, a kiddo who has a retained moral reflex, they might also present with sensory over responsivity, specifically with their vestibular system, and they might be really hesitant when their feet leave the ground. They might get car sick really easily. They might be really uncomfortable when they're a baby and you throw them in the air and they like freeze and they get really tense and uncomfortable. You can see that progression from infancy into childhood, which is why it's so important to intervene and integrate that reflex so that way you can allow them to unlock that potential and get out of that primitive state of the brain and access those higher level cognitive centers of their brain. So we're gonna give you three things that you can do if your child is struggling with this or if you yourself are struggling with this. If you think you have a retained moral reflex and or if you are struggling with vestibular processing, we just talked about how there's a connection. So if you have a retained moral reflex, you likely are struggling with vestibular processing and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we're gonna recommend is to use proprioception, proprioceptive-based activities before, during, and after vestibular activities. So proprioceptive activities are gonna be anything that works the joints and the muscles. We call it heavy work, pushing, pulling, lifting, carrying heavy items, anything that is deep pressure. So massage, getting a deep bear hug, using a weighted blanket. Those strategies are gonna be really calming to the nervous system and you can use them before a car ride if you get motion sickness. You can use them before going to the park and then after playing at the park to just help decrease some of that sensory overload that might be occurring. The next strategy is a little bit more challenging, but we want to make sure that we're recommending it. We want you to either go find an OT practitioner who specializes in primitive reflex integration or 
take a course or learn more information about assessing and integrating primitive reflexes, specifically that Moro reflex. If you can see an in-person practitioner, they can test your child's reflexes and they can tell you, yes, no, this is what I'm seeing, and they can put you on a specific integration program designed to help integrate those reflexes. If you don't live in an area where you can find a practitioner who specializes in primitive reflex integration, there are a variety of courses out there. We have created one that teaches you to assess and integrate the primitive reflexes in fun, functional ways, including play, which is a child's main occupation. So however you want to go about it, just make sure that you are following a specific reflex integration protocol. The third tip here is to start completing flexion and extension activities that are going to target the vestibular system and the moro reflex. So flexion and extension, extension is where you're extending or straightening your body against gravity. Flexion is the opposite where you're bending your joints, curling in. And our first activity that we love for this is the Superman banana exercise. Superman is you're going to lay on your stomach, straighten out your arms and your legs and lift your arms, your legs and your head up off the ground and hold that extension position against gravity for 10 to 15 seconds if possible. If that's really, really difficult, you can start with however many seconds you can successfully hold and work your way up. And then you're gonna switch over to the banana where you lay on your back and you're gonna lift your arms. Oftentimes we'll flex our arms and cross our arms over our chest like this and then cross your legs, bend your knees, lifting your head up off the ground also so you're in that really like flexed, um, like what is it? Uh, fetal position, fetal position mm -hmm. holding everything up against gravity and again holding it for 10 to 15 seconds if possible and then repeat that Superman banana exercise for a couple of a couple of reps every day now just so you know these are not just for kids adults should be doing these and can do these as well and will also notice some changes some positive changes and benefits yep. the other thing that i wanted to mention is when you are doing those extension and flexion positions make sure that the eyes are doing the same thing so in that superman position or extension make sure that the eyes are looking straight ahead like far across the room and it, like basically diverging and then when you're in that flexion or that fetal position make sure that the eyes are like converging and you're looking almost like at your knees so we want yeah. our eyes to like mm -hmm. come together and then we want our eyes to like look far away as well so, so make sure you do that in that banana position i'll often tell kids to try to look at their belly button yeah yeah, exactly. So, there you go. Another great activity is the cat-cow exercise. This is great for multiple reflexes, but what you're gonna do is basically just get on hands and knees and alternate from that cat position where you're looking down at your knees and arching your back, and then looking up at the sky in that cow position and your back is kind of arching. And again, you're using your eyes, you're visually tracking, you're looking up at the sky and then you're looking down at your knees and you're arching your back, you're keeping your hands pointing forward, you're keeping your feet on the ground, you're keeping your hands flat they're not going to be like up like this on the ground mm -hmm. um, so just a couple of things that you can do in order to kind of help this reflex and and just you know hopefully take some of that severity away and get the body out of that fight or flight pattern and that cat cow exercise is really going to stimulate that vestibular system with those head position changes up and down so that's where you're going to want to use some heavy work or some deep pressure afterwards yep so with that, we hope it was helpful, kind of a, you know, intro to this information. Like I said, we have a full course available. We have a free webinar available to just help you learn more about this information, more than we can give you in this short YouTube video. If you found this video helpful, you can leave a comment below, ask us a question. Also click the like button and subscribe to the Harkla YouTube channel. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. That's where we like to hang out at Harkla underscore family, as well as at all things sensory podcast and make sure you are listening to the podcast it's all things sensory and we're on youtube spotify and apple podcasts and that is it for today we hope it was helpful if you have questions like we mentioned drop them below but we'll plan on seeing you next week for another video okay bye i know what i want to say but i can't say it please just say it for me are you sure i forgot what i was <laughs> There we go, we did it. See, just had to change the order of operations.